You want to Fire. check the room? 702. Uh, it's called the main to order at 702. We will now call roll. I'm here as chair. Commissioner Castaneda, vice chair. Here. Commissioner Lale, absent. Commissioner Bussey. Here. Commissioner Marino. Present. Commissioner Juan. Yeah. Uh, no city council liaisons present. And one staff member, Eric. Thank you for being here. Um, I will take a motion to approve our agenda. So moved. Marino, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Anyone? <laughs> uh, and now we will have any brief announcements from staff commissioners or, uh, or liaisons. Yeah. Yeah, I have a few just quick announcements. Okay. Um, one is that we processed an administrative uh, certificate of appropriateness for 21 College Park. That was a project which the commission had kind of pre or we previously um, noticed just for some window changes, um, not, nothing really on the exterior. Um, there's, there's a, they were expanding the garage a little bit. Uh, they also, in this version, added or adding a separate uh, accessory dwelling unit. But there's some minor changes there, but nothing uh, really affected the, the building. So, uh, so we processed that. Um, we are expecting to process another administrative COA for 334 I Street, which is a merit resource. Um, they have a basement, and they're, they're, they're kind of converting that into a, an, an accessory dwelling unit. Okay. Those aren't really any, any other exterior changes there. I think they're also repairing the front deck with a porch. Um, so that's primarily what they're doing so far. Um, but we will know, it, will, it will be noticed, so the neighbors will be notified of that. Um, we also, our staff also had a chance to visit 48 College Park. So that, I'm not too familiar with the history, but it, it was a long time owner uh, who passed away and the children who have been renovating it, but because it's occupied for so long, they have a lot of items that they were partly cleaning out, but also ones which they thought might be of interest to city or other organizations, and so um, they arranged for city staff, which include like, the police chief, uh, Carrie Dyer, the community, uh, CMO's office, who's also worked a lot in community services, just to observe what they had in case there was some interest. There was, you know, books and letters and things like that, but um, it was pretty impressive what they put one of the interesting things that they, that they told us about is, not that it was the original fire station, but back before the, when it was, the city was unincorporated, I guess they had a shed, and they still had that shed in the backyard. It's about like 100 square feet or maybe a little bit larger. It's where they kept the equipment for the fire, like axes or was, water hoses, things like that. So it was uh, interesting in that. Not that it sucked. You know. And they had a bell. I think they had a bell. So they had a bell. Okay. Huh, nice. mind, which they gave to the fire chief. I have a question. So, um, if we, it's not a concern for the historical resources, the resources uh, management commission, but you mentioned to us, and, but it, you know, for, when you mentioned, it, we don't know what exactly, you know, um, what's the project like. So, should we have a review or not? I can, if you want, I can send you. I can forward the information to you, but it doesn't require your review. It doesn't. Right. Okay. It's a more significant sort of change. Okay. Um, and for one of these, it did actually come to you. It was maybe quite a year ago. Um, the architect was here at that time. Um, and it was a um, Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then this one is just a more, more of a minor, just a minor change with like windows and changes. Like that. Okay. Um, and then um, also, the, some folks may have noticed that the city council um, sent out the. the, the that release or information just for recruitment of advisory commissions. Um, the Historic Resources Commission is not one of the ones listed with the recruiting members, but it was just more that um, if you know folks who may be interest, interested um, or people who may be qualified, they are recruiting for some, some of the other advisory commissions. And so, you know, any, yeah, could you send a copy to me? You can actually have this copy to mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so that's, and under, uh, that's underway right now. So if there's anyone you think of who you think might be interested, we would suggest that they look into it. And, yeah, so there are there are vacancies on quite a few of the commissions. Including ours. Including yes. ours. <laughs> but you have more than more than some more than some commissions. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Um, 
and then just for the council subcommittee uh, on the commissions, again, it's not on the agenda, so we can't discuss it, but it's more just to let you know there, there's a, there was a council subcommittee that's looking into changes with, this, with the various commissions. Um, one of them was with you know, HRC and Planning Commission with their potential merger. There's no actual, there's no proposal at this time, there's nothing for the commission to review, but um, you know, when, when that does occur or when there is a recommendation related to the commission, then I presume that will be a lot of chance to, to weigh in on that. Um, I did forward a comment to the commission that came from the general public, and so we have an opportunity as an individual person in member to speak, to speak uh, to the council during the if you feel, uh, feel necessary, but otherwise it's not the topic for the commission to take up until we get further direction from council. And I think that's all I've got for my communication items, unless the commissioners are. Uh, seeing none, we shall move on. Uh, public comment this time. Any member of the public may address the commission on matters which are not listed on this agenda or on or are listed on the consent calendar. In person, public comments are limited to more, no more than three minutes. Since speakers will be asked to state their name for the record, do we have any public comments? Okay. Well, thanks for being here. Anyway, um, we will now move on to the consent calendar. Uh, we have one item on our consent calendar, which is our commission minutes from February 26th. 2024. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar and items with that? Motion. Uh, Commissioner Bussey, a second. second. Marino, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I just wrote it down in case you ask me a question later. <laughs> um, so moving on to our regular items, we have three uh, items. The first is the museum report. Um, do we have the museum report here? We reported it over email. I, I, I have read it. Museum okay. <coughs> report. Merrily wrote it, and I saw it maybe an hour ago. I saw maybe two hours ago, so yes. She's not feeling well. Oh, I'm she's sorry. Out with a respiratory problem okay. for about three weeks now. Oh. And uh, she did work this last Saturday, but, but uh, she coughed a lot. So. Oh, yeah. So anyhow, since our last report, John and Marilee, by the way, my name is John Kane. Thank you. And I am supposedly the co-director of the museum. <laughs> so, at any rate, um, I've been working on revising the museum's permanent exhibits and also examining the collection to ensure all items have been accessioned and are stored properly. In regard to the exhibits, we have started with the one on Davis Library, which was put up during the late 1980s. We're adding some new objects and photos and also rewriting the captions. A major goal was to provide more information about Etta Reed Nosler, who was a major force in the campaign to provide a library for the community, and Hattie Weber, who was part of that campaign, and then played an invaluable role by becoming the Davis Free Library's first page librarian in 1911. We're especially excited to have recently received from the Friends of the Davis Library a 1934 unabridged dictionary, which was donated to the library by Hedda Hausler's family. This thing is about this mm -hmm. wide and about this big, and takes up almost the entire case. So I don't think it will be open to mm -hmm. show it. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, um, 
who were donated to the library by Etta Hostler's family after her death. The cover is inscribed to the Davis Library in memory of M. Etta Reed Hostler, its founder. Patrons used this dictionary in the old library building for more than 35 years. We're also asked adding information about how Hattie Weber became a professional librarian despite having grown up in a town without a library. We started a review of the museum collection with the books, checking the accession numbers against those in our Past Perfect program, and coming up with a more user-friendly system of organization. And this last week I kind of resorted all the books and arranged them by subject. You know. Thank you. Anyhow, volunteer Lulu Zhang has recently added several materials to her Ride a du Double Decker Spare the Air exhibit, which tells the story of the red English buses that are used in the, or have been used in Davis's Unitran system. About a week after she put the exhibit up, UCD announced its plan to celebrate the 110th millionth uh, Unitrans writer. And I understand that person got some nice presents. And uh, uh, they had a marching band and she got some nice gifts. Suddenly our exhibit was participating in the celebration, so Lulu added recent Enterprise articles about the event. Since then, Double Decker continues to be popular with visitors of all ages. It's a familiar Davis subject about which many are curious, and the exhibit's many red buses make it especially attractive. These are mostly pictures, although we do have a small model of what I guess is the first First bus was a route master. That's a name of a type of bus, and it went back to England. It was was um, um, bought by an English automobile museum and it went back to England. Yes, Lulu has been in touch with Bob Black, ASUCD president, and. 1966, who masterminded the Bush Project. He's expressed interest in giving a talk at the museum about this period of UCD history, which would be an exciting development. To update you on the situation of individuals camping in tents near the WPA storage building, the original woman who has been there since last summer is now gone. Tracy Reynolds, one of our liaisons with the city, believes she was convinced to go to a shelter. Then about three weeks ago, a small group with another tent appeared in the same location. They left, however, after only a few days. Our main concern is the welfare of those who have to live in these conditions. We are also at a point, however, where we want to do some repainting of a wall of the building and most importantly get some estimates for replacing the roof, which hadn't, wasn't done when the building was remodeled. We're concerned that if people are sheltering adjacent to the building, contractors won't be willing to take the job. And she wrote, do you have any information or suggestions regarding this situation? And I have a little personal note here. I just finished reading uh, a book called Rough Sleeping. It was by Tracy Kidder. And it's probably the best book I've ever read, read about the homeless situation. And it's set 
in Boston, where his doctor is basically running a clinic for homeless people. And it really um, opened my eyes about a lot of situations that you have with homeless people. One of the things that amazed me um, was um, homeless people are poor people, but the largest number of homeless people in Boston who were sort of permanently homeless, I mean homeless for years at a time, were white. The, there weren't very many Hispanics and there were some black people, but most of the people in that homeless population were white. And then, uh, which gives you kind of a, an idea of that there's a different kind of cultural situation going there, that, that maybe people in the Hispanic community are more willing to have people sleep on their couches and, and take in relatives and, who have problems like substance abuse and that sort of thing. And then um, uh, it described how, how it was, why, why, why did these people want to sleep outside when they had a nice warm shelter to go to? And they, you know, people don't realize that the beds are about this far apart. And there are hundreds of beds in a single room. And there's no privacy. No privacy in your nap. Can't get away from these people. They can't leave at night. And you can't come back in the daytime. And uh, um, so anyhow, I, I recommend the book if anybody's seen it. The two people that we had there at, at the museum were both elderly women. I mean, not really elderly women, but maybe in their 60s at least. One of them was um, had a walker. I mean, she, I don't know how she got supplies or anything, but she was walking around with a walker. And um, um, I'm, I'm not sure. And we didn't know what it You know, they were distributing trash all over the place. We weren't sure if they were doing it, or people were, or somebody else was coming by doing it. And uh, um, I spoke to uh, a couple of guys that were hired by the farmer's market to go around and clean up trash and put stuff in it. They were told, don't touch any of that stuff over there. You know, you can't do that. I said, can you clean up just next to the museum? Nope, they couldn't do it. And uh, I assume these are city employees, or at least at some point they're city employees. I mean, I can talk to Tracy Renth, but I don't know if she, she probably is aware of it, but I'll follow up with her as a property I'm manager. I'm sure that we can find a solution where the city has some good homeless services staff that they can liaison with these folks if they're still there <coughs> while if you need to do repainting or the roof. Well, to, they're not to, there now. Yeah, they're to, not if there they now. were to come back, I'm sure we but, can encourage them no, to relocate not there during now, the work period. But they were there yeah. for at least six months. Yeah. One lady there was there for at least six months. Right. And the uh, lady before her was a little younger, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, she was there for all summer. And, um, I mean, they were, they were obviously there. I don't know. Yeah, no, the... The unhoused, there's there's a lot of um, I'm sure there's a lot of concern for these folks that are unhoused in our community, and we'd like to do right by them. Um, but we also need to keep our buildings in decent shape and, and maintain them. So I think there's probably a, a compromise there that city so staff hopefully can help with. This um, this whole area is about as far from the children's playground as from here to the corner. Of that. Yeah. You know. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I, I was just kind of, we didn't know what to do about it. Right. Yeah, well, I think there, there, you don't have to call the police, but the police have a liaison that will help um, the homeless folks 
and the well, we didn't call it police. But, but, but you can if, if, if it is an issue, I think, in the future. You know, I, yeah. I think we're, we're, we're more concerned about the people sleeping there and what were not good conditions. And, yes. Uh, um, than we were about the, the trash and the debris mm -hmm. and, and, and that kind of stuff. But, um, <clears throat> it, it, it surprised me that that it went on as long as it did. What happened to those people? Huh? What happened to the women? Do you know? Well, at least it was half a year. I, I heard you know, um, the, uh, Chinese Communist Party members pushing people, real human, out of the house and take occupied. Yeah, that's my I found you know, by Chinese uh, community. Um, I heard one of the uh, people actually homeless. I, I will take a look, but that's you know, it is a concern. Yeah. We appreciate you bring it to our attention and we can follow up in all those Because also well, I suspect there are some kind of there's, there's a whole bunch of lethal. There's, there's, problems, limitations, there's limitations on it. Barriers to doing stuff with this, this problem. And, and there's, for instance, in the, in the Boston situation. In the well, John, 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 for the museum report, we appreciate you bringing it up to us, and we'll we just can't do on. anything about it. <laughs> yeah, well, I just felt strongly about it. I just tripped up, but uh, um, I, I realize there are, there are bureaucratic problems there, and I I remember the, there was this um, thing where where somebody was where we were going to establish a help center at one of the corporation yards, and there were people who lived blocks away from that. John, I think we're getting off topic. Um, we're getting off topic for the meeting, for this meeting. Okay. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Uh, okay. All right. But we, if you want, we can talk and talk to you about it. Okay. That's too. Thank you. I don't have a copy of the truth, so I have. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your museum report. Uh, we'll move on to item B, which is the PG&E Building Demolition Historic Review. And Eric, I think you have uh, a report for us, and we're being asked to um, review the architectural information report on the two buildings, and then perhaps find the two buildings do not meet the eligibility criteria. So. We're correct. Yeah, just a brief presentation, sure. and then I think we have Mimi. Is it Mimi? Correct. From from Rim, Ar Rim Architects. Okay. Um, so representing the applicant here. Um, so I think everyone is familiar with the PGE site. It's like a 25 acre or so uh, corporation yard, long time use in the city. Um, they have, it's always been used as a service, repair, um, maintenance area. They have numerous buildings, um, mostly storage, warehouse, fabrication type buildings, uh, as well as you know, other types of other buildings there. Um, they recently propo were proposing to demolish a couple of the buildings. I mean, one is the office, office building, located facing on L Street frontage, um, and then a larger kind of warehouse storage building on um, the second street side. And, and then part of that, because of the buildings themselves dated back more than 50 years old, they're subject to our demolition ordinance. And so we asked PG to provide more information on those buildings, which they did uh, in the reports that are attached to the staff report, uh, where they did we provided as much history as they were able to describe them. There's some of their photos there just to show kind of the condition um, and as well as what the original, to the extent they know, the original buildings. The warehouse storage building is it's all it's kind of corrugated metal. The building's pretty large, but uh, and that's been altered, based on the report, altered numerous times over the years. Um, and then the uh, office building is you know, prefabric it's a prefabricated uh, building as well. They're just, yeah. my understanding, they're at the end of their useful life. They're kind of probably more than um, their usability. And so, um, but based on the, the, the report uh, and the information, um, it doesn't appear that there's any eligibility, they don't meet uh, criteria for designation, but we needed to just bring it to the commission for your agreement and concurrence. Um, and um, you know, 
that the, the, the buildings have also, the demolition has also been noticed, so we've been noticing it in accordance with our requirements in the newspaper and also to surrounding the properties. I did get one comment letter from a business across the street, and they actually said they were in support of cleaning up the site and, and removing the building. Um, so they we're looking forward to that if it happens. Um, and so, yeah, we're just, again, asking for the commission to basically agree with the condition conclusions and analysis in the report. Um, but if you have any questions, I do have a question um, about this. Uh, I, I heard this site actually is part of a SpaceX op uh, operation. And uh, so I have a question actually, it's more in general. Um, so I've noticed, you know, City of Davis has made a lot of renovation. It's everywhere. Where are the money coming from? And the, what is your company background? And what kind of, you know, are you related to the CCP? Because I know the Chinese Communist Party actually is, you know, infiltrating United States. Are you Shannon Well, I think we... Well, yeah, Commissioner Wan, I think we don't have any questions about who owns the site, which is Pacific Gas and Electric Company, which is a utility company in the state of California. So if you have any questions related to the architectural information provided, yeah, I wanted to drive me around, but I wasn't be able to get in. I don't know if it, if it, do we have a chance to take a look, you know, like how what kind of architecture, historical value. Of, yeah, it's in the actually. report. Did you see? Did you read the report? I I, I did, but I, I was wondering if I could go in person to take a look. I don't think that we typically go in person to take a look. Um, you could have driven by when prior yeah, to I the did. meeting. So yeah. that's usually what is. Done. There, were, I mean, there were a number of photos provided, um, and I'm not sure if you would like. Did you just speak at all to the to the project, or are you just here for questions? Just here for questions. Just here for questions. I think you've covered most of it. Um, we found it to be pretty much auxiliary in nature and the end of its life. So we'd like to advocate for demolition. Commissioners, uh, questions, comments? The report was thorough, thank you. <laughs> I have surveyed several coordinated metal buildings myself. <laughs> it's difficult to find things to write besides that. <laughs> it is rectangular. <laughs> 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 yes. um, I, I saw, I read the report, I understand that it, uh, building 3601 has changed dramatically, so it, it is no longer, its original integrity in the second building does not appear to have any architectural significance whatsoever. There is no association with any historic events or people for the city of Davis. The architecture is not from an architect of note, so uh, I, I look at there's no further questions or discussion, I would entertain a motion uh, to so I the recommendations. Yes? I do have a, a question. What I heard is this is a part of the uh, Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX oper operation. So it is a pg e building, as I've already said. So yeah. we don't need to talk about Elon Musk or SpaceX. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll move to accept the proposed report. Okay, Commissioner Reno has removed, moved to review, accept, and concur, and find that the ones do not meet the eligibility criteria to be considered. Do I have a second? I will. Plus you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Enjoy your demolition. Thank you. Can I just clarify for Commissioner yeah. One, did you do that uh, a, 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 a yes or no? Or no. Abstain? It's a no. Yeah. Uh, next on our agenda is the WP, WPA Stamps Committee update. That's very difficult to say. Um, we'd like to receive an update from the committee. Uh, I saw that you submitted a report. Thank you very much. So I'll, I'll leave it to you, Commissioner Castaneda and Lale. Great. Um, so just to kind of uh, go over the report, uh, we met with Karen Moore, a community member who completed the WPA Stamps report. Thank you again. 
Um, and the Bowers edition, I included that because I want to yes. make sure that's part of this conversation. So we have just a few summary points. So I think right now the main goal is just to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward. Um, so we're not necessarily approving a plan of action or anything mm -hmm. like that. This is just we want to share kind of what we learned um, and some of the directions I think we're going to need to we, we think that we need to go kind of moving forward. Um, so the first thing that I think came up was what stamps do we want to preserve? So as you all know in the report, we received um, two that were featured, the WPA stamps and the Bowers Edition subdivision. Um, so those are things that we're going to want to keep in mind. Do you want to share about the options for preservation? Yes, yeah, so with the preservation, there's a couple of different things that we can do and other cities have done. So preserving them in place, obviously, not bothering them if you know public works or anybody doing work on the sidewalks does need to affect the areas possibly relocating them just in one piece. And sometimes if they can't be relocated, you know, can they go somewhere else? What not, can it be replaced? And then some cities have actually recreated stamps if there's no other way to preserve them. So some places have like almost made their own stamp that they could do elsewhere. And that would just need further research into the cities that have done this and how we could adopt that. Um, and so some things that we might want to consider is to what extent do we want to prioritize public visibility. Um, so obviously if a car is blocking it or things like that. Um, and also we have over 30, so that might be something to keep in mind is how many of them are we willing to preserve moving forward. Um, if you want to do the next one. Yeah, so the one big site that we talked about was G Street and 5th Street, um, the former lumber yard. And they had a stamp over there. The current contractor is willing to try to preserve it. That's kind of the one example that we have of recent occurrences that this has happened. There's no city requirement on this yet, but if this does kind of go through, this would provide insight on how we can do it moving forward. If, you know, there's a process in place, how can we streamline that to be adopted more generally? Um, and yeah, this is kind of just a starting point if it ends up going through with, with the contractors. And then, uh, so this stamp will provide a rationale for implementing a city citywide standard plan. Eric, we don't have an update on that, but what I, what I know you're right about the public works. Right, no, I'm sorry, I'm afraid that. Perfect, just want to make sure. So that's something that we might want to follow up on, um, you know, so we don't have an answer to that yet. Um, and potentially other historic resources, so for example, the Bowers edition. Um, anything, of course, that we're going to propose and need to involve public works, so it's something we want to make sure that we're all, um, you know, thinking about now before it becomes an, an, um, an issue later. Um, we all, uh, so Commissioner Lala and I also wondered um, how the Historic Resources Management Commission might also support educational resources related to the stamps. Um, so as we're thinking about this, um, I think one of the things we both talked about, the things that are going to be really important is why are we preserving them? Does the public know why this matters? Um, so those are things we might want to think about. Um, yeah, and in the future we would just potentially want to share further reports with preservation. Um, to city council and then to propose that council issues a resolution in support for the preservation of the WPA stamps and the Bowers edition um, stamps and then we have a list of sites that would effectively um, be you know an issue in the near future so C Street and 7th Street intersection it doesn't have ramps so that could be a point in the near future B Street there's a couple of stamps near the administration building for the schools and then first street in between b and c in a driveway there's a stamp so that's one that we talked about and no one kind of knows who owns it or where that's going but in case it does end up being you know a site for renovations it could be affected um yeah okay. can we ask karen to comment mm -hmm. if you'd like to comment you don't have to um i thought the summary was great i just wanted to clarify on the lumber yard project, um, the statement that there's no city requirement to preserve it is um, there's no, no there's nothing in city code. But since the developer agreed to do it, it was added as a condition of approval to the project. Oh, okay. So Thank if you. they needed to um, not preserve it, then at least the city would look at it in some fashion. Mm -hmm. so I, I think that that would be the way it would work. Well, it was made, as you said, it was made a condition of approval for them to, because they, because they agreed to preserve it, um, you know, they exactly how they would do it, where they put it, you know, we weren't, we didn't have that, those details worked out. Okay. But um, yeah. it is a requirement that they do preserve it. Yeah, so now it is a requirement, but only for oh, there, so they, the other ones are, are less. And the only other thing was on the proposed recommendation, 
I didn't know if um, the commission needed to specify that at least at this point in the process, um, continuing to meet and gather information about the preservation of the WPA stamps, is language also should be added to mention the Bowers edition stamps there um, in the, if, if you take an action like that. So just to clarify that it's continuing to look at both of them. Yes. yes. Um, so Eric, do I need to make those modifications and then resend that to you? Um, if you would like to, yeah. Okay, I want to make sure you're So the proposed recommendation on the bottom is, is a vote in the future for this. I think so. Yes. Okay, because it was not agenda, it was a vote. Yes. Right, so we're. More just discussion of yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just or confirming. For some of these yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, letting the commission know yeah. where this is headed in the future if this does continue to be a topic of conversation and meeting. Yeah. Have you looked at some of the other stamps other than the WPA? For instance, the, uh, the property line markers and the numbers for lots? We haven't discussed that specifically. We talked about it a little bit, but I don't think we decided to move it into the further. Some of that is the Bowers edition um, stamps. Those are um, in the Bowers edition subdivision, which is generally between 7th and 6th Street, G and B Street. They have those. I'm not aware of those being in a lot of other locations that I've walked in town. Um, it, they were just added in that, they were provided in that subdivision uh, in part because that was the first subdivision in the city to have paved sidewalks. So since the other um, earlier subdivisions didn't have paved sidewalks, um, there was no place to put a lot of stamp in, for example. And I have another comment. I, I, I know this is out of the scope of the WPA stamp issue. Mm -hmm. However, since it is sidewalks, um, I think we should expand the scope to look at the pattern of, of, uh, of markings on the sidewalk for uh, expansion joints, because in the downtown area, you have the the six inch, six to eight inch border marker, and then the um, perpendicular markers to the street create little squares. And unfortunately, when people repair sidewalks, a lot of people don't mimic that. And it definitely adds a lot of character to the walk in the streets. <coughs> I know that that's included in the public works standards for uh, all of the old north, so that would be from 5th to 7th G to B. So it's in their standards for that. I don't, be don't believe it's in standards related to all of the uh, downtown core area or whatever we call it now with the, under the new plan, all those sections, because they had some other sidewalk um, goals in mind. I also think just for now, I mean, at least obviously we're talking about WPA stamps and the Bowers edition, but I think in the future, like creating this as a precedent, I think it would be helpful for those kind of conversations as well. Thank you. If the sidewalk expansion joint marking is part of Public Works' scope of work in Old North, which is really where these stamps are, could these stamps be added? somehow to that general standard. <laughs> I'm just curious, like, I'd like to have a, with, like, people to have a conversation with Public Works about the stamps. I, they're really the ones yeah. Yeah, some power say, here. So, I, I, think, yeah. I think we just wanted to make sure yeah. we got the informational report because we also have a longer report um, um, that Karen put together that um, I think would be helpful for some of the things that you're talking about. We definitely want to make sure that it's Public Works leaving this. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about what, what is the action item besides us generally supporting it if there's some way to codify this, then that's probably our goal. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. right, 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 just identifying you know, either additional steps that right. the community might okay. take or yeah. things we might want to look into. Um, and like, I can certainly have a conversation with them on what, you know, what you, uh, areas or things, of, topics of interest or, or where, what you want to pursue. And if it's a matter of maybe setting up a meeting with public works, we can do that, um, things like that. I also think we just wanted to make sure this is what you all had in mind before we, before we go forward. too much further. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. For being on my subcommittee and meeting and providing work. So I do have a question about the you know, subcommittee meetings because of what for my understanding, should we you know, not even 
influence the our peers, so we should have the meeting method. In the agenda, you know, sometimes the subcommittee's meeting, and I have no idea. We have one subcommittee, it is the WPA stamp subcommittee. That is the only subcommittee that we have. Okay. It's an sure. ad hoc committee. Yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, everybody has a limited time and scope. Mm -hmm. so. um, any other thoughts on w WPA stamp subcommittee? <laughs> We have one ad hoc subcommittee, WP markings. I don't think that we need any other subcommittees at this moment. Um, and then we have item eight, long range calendar, upcoming meeting dates, and, and or potential agenda items. And so our next meeting is scheduled for May 20th, it's a Monday, at 7 p.m. here. Oh, I have um, a question. Um, yes. Uh, you know, only, uh, if I have a question, if I want. I want item to the agenda. Should I email to you or should I, should I email to Eric? This is my question. You know, because right now I can I can feel the agenda limited. You know, what we can talk because if it's not on agenda, I'm not uh, allowed to bring up to. Then what if I have a concern to some department? I want to make suggest the item to the uh, agenda. How should I proceed? Yeah, you you can contact me, or it can be. Um, I think you could discuss a little bit right now if there was an item you wanted to add and see what the commission feels about that. Um, but it may be limited on what we're able to do as well. So. Yeah, so um, I I don't know if uh, the city council has, has uh, you know, um, made a decision about this uh, uh, A store, you know, the parking lot. Is that the development is actually the parking lot or demolish the AC store for, you know, the the east of, east of part of the AC store yeah. or, you know, I, I'm not very clear with the exactly because I actually went to looking for the, the number is not there and even the next door, you know, the, the shop will say, oh, I have never heard of, uh, we, we couldn't find out it. So, because I believe that the parking is, uh, lot is very important when I go to downtown, it's hard to find, find it. So I, I want to bring back this and I want to know what is going on. I, I can talk to you about it after. It's it's not it's not it's not it's not the parking lot. So that's no, the yeah, because I did the So I can use your background on the problem. Yeah, that's my concern is that if I have something I saw what happened in the family, can I bring up it, it it looks like I kind of bring to the meeting, then how can I add to, you know, add to the agenda to become a, something we can talk about? And become a concern of the whole, you know, uh, committee, co whole commission, not just like a subcommittee's uh, decision. That's my question. I don't know, well, I think it came up before when you asked about it, and it's there was no, it wasn't, did not fall under the historic resources commission purview or your responsibilities. So there was no, there was no reason to bring it to you, and no reason to put it on your agenda. Or yeah, so um, I also, I found out, you know, I did not print out, I, I found out from this, um, it's a uh, city's uh, public, uh, you know, okay, uh, code item, and the downtown is, has, you know, it's designated before, uh, and, you know, I, I want to mention, is that what able the guidelines for the, it's 40, Point thirteen a dot twenty applicability. Excuse me for my English. And B. Actually, what you know, wherever the guideline for the DTR and that's the downtown area uh, conflicts with the existing zone standard, including planned development, the more restrictive standard shall prevail. So I just want to let you know. The downtown has been designated, and I, I found from the city you know, code. And it is a historical, it's not like where we don't have guidelines on, you know. So that's what I want to share. I, I, do, I would say for the uh, long term agenda, um, I am expecting to. Uh, 
so the city has been having uh, has been having a consultant work on some additional DPR form updates. Um, so there are ones that I would plan to bring to you for your review. Um, they're also finishing up another set. So I don't know if we'll be able to have them to you in May. I do want to make sure that you have enough time to review them. So you know, as soon as I can, we'll, we will post them, and I can let you know uh, that they're posted for your review to have it to have enough time before the meeting. But that would be a future item. I don't, it might be May, it might, might be June, depending on when we get the rest of the, uh, the updates. Uh, get them out, uh, have them available for you to look at. It's kind of the upcoming one that I have in mind. So which means that kind of email to you? Comment yeah, you So that's all I have. That's all I have for one range okay. calendar. Does anyone else have any potential agenda items? Okay, anything else? Take a motion to adjourn. I'll move. There we go. I have a second. Um, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourn 748. Excellent, efficient work. <laughs>